the 10 best examples of extended reality. In my new book, Extended Reality in Practice, I talk about how augmented and virtual and mixed reality are transforming our world at the moment. So what I want to do in this video is just give you some examples and we've, we're used to augmented reality with our Pokemon Go games and our Snapchat filter. So what I want to do is really go beyond this and look at some of the, the really interesting, life-changing, transformative use cases of extended reality. And of course, uh, extended reality is making our everyday life easier. We have now really cool apps like the Magic Sudoku app that basically you use your smartphone, you place this onto a Sudoku game and it will then automatically complete it for you in front of your eyes, which is pretty cool. Or you simply Google, you use Google Translate on a restaurant menu. So you go to Greece or in, uh, to China, you point it onto the menu and again it will overlay the English or whatever language you want on top of the existing menu using augmented reality. And then we have really cool apps like Gatwick Airport in London. So for example, it will help you find your gate using your smartphone. So you simply, uh, I'm at gate 23, you take your smartphone on, it will guide you to where that gate is. So it will make our everyday life easier. Extended reality also enables organizations to give their customers additional information about their services, about their products. So we now have AR enabled wine labels or beer labels where you point them onto the label and it will then give you more information. Nike does something similar in their stores where you simply scan a shoe and it then provides you more information about this shoe. And virtual reality again enables organizations to provide more information. So Tom's for example, a shoe and apparel company um, basically virtually transports people using virtual reality goggles to Peru to they have this great initiative where they are trying to make a difference to local people they call it one for one so this is a giving campaign that gives um, back to local people and actually customers can experience this in real time. Another really important area is showcasing products. Um, Apple has been doing this really effectively. So if you go to the Apple website and you want to see their latest iPhone or iMac, you can simply project this into your room in front of you and then you can walk around it using your smartphone camera to see what it looks like from all angles. You can place it on your desk to see what it looks like. And companies like IKEA have done something similar. You can now place IKEA furniture into your room and look what it might actually look like in the, in the context of your own house. Another really important area is that we can now have this ability to try before you buy using extended reality. Companies like Warby Parker in, uh, allow people to try on glasses. We now have this ability to try on jewelry, even watches, um, earrings, um, makeup, L'Oreal is doing this. You can try haircuts before the hairdresser actually cuts it. Or even important things like if you want to get a tattoo, you can use the Ink Hunter app to again have the tattoo projected onto your um, body part using augmented reality and then you can see what it actually looks like for real. And you can even try holidays. You can now put virtual reality goggles on, visit the resort that you are considering to go to on your vacation and you can explore it in virtual reality before you go. So try before you buy is a really important use case. The other use case is customizing pro uh, products. So Porsche, for example, is a high-end car company and in their showroom they might have a white Porsche with red leather interior. You're not interested in this, you want a silver one with black interior. Again, you can simply put your phone against it using augmented reality. It will customize it for you or even more immersive. You can put your VR goggles on and see what this car actually looks like when you're sitting in it. Realtors like Sotheby's, for example, are now using virtual reality to give you uh, not only a virtual tour of a house, but even virtual staging. So if you like really modern interior, 
it can basically redecorate the house virtually for you on the fly. You can try out different furniture to really see what this house might look like when it's made up in the style that you actually like. Another use case is instructions. And I talked about IKEA before. Wouldn't it be great if you have all your IKEA bits on the floor, you simply put your phone on it, it then automatically labels which bit is what and then show you how to assemble it. Or if you want to top up the water or the coolant in your car, you simply point your camera phone into your um, car and it will then show exactly where to put the water and where to put the coolant and so on. So instructions will increasingly be enabled by extended reality. Another massively important use case is education. Um, Google, for example, has done lots of stuff in this space. So for example, if you search for an animal or a dinosaur, you can use augmented reality to place it right in front of your eyes in your room, which brings things to life. Um, but they also have virtual reality tools like Google Expeditions that allow people to have virtual tours to Mount Everest, or you can visit virtual museums, or you can have a virtual training using um, extended reality. So it will really make education more immersive and more real. Another use case is healthcare. So we now have virtual reality um, that helps us to relax. So you can use it for guided meditation or yoga, but we can also use virtual rea reality, for example, to diagnose medical conditions. You can now diagnose vis visual impairment, for example, or even certain mental health conditions. And we can use it for therapy. There's now um, a VR exposure ther uh, therapy for PTSD, for example, or you can enhance cognitive behavioral therapy with um, augmented reality and virtual reality. And of course, it has a space in the operating theater too, where you can give uh, the doctors pre-surgical surgical information or even holographic visualizations above the operating theater to see what they're doing. Another key use case is entertainment and sport. Um, we're now used to seeing overlays of digital images when we watch the tennis competition at Wimbledon or when we watch American football where the lane, lines are automatically superimposed or we see this in soccer and, fo uh, and, and European football where we look for offsides. But these will become more immersive um, where in the future you can watch, or you can already do this, you can watch um, football games and soccer games in virtual reality in 360. But in the future you will be able to place yourself anywhere, anywhere on the field or on the pitch and watch it from every angle. And of course, computer games are increasingly becoming VR. So my kids love the Beat Saber virtual reality app, for example, the, the game. So gaming and football and soccer and sport, a big use case. And finally, it will help us to bring important issues to life. Um, again, make them more immersive. So if you want to feel what it feels like to be a black person riding a bus in a dominantly white environment, you can now do this. You can visit a refugee camp and see what it actually looks like and feels like. Or that Greenpeace created a, a VR experience where you, where you can visit the Antarctic, for example, and see some of the impact of climate change. And again, the, it takes things beyond the theoretical reading and makes it more immersive and hopefully makes important issues become uh, alive. So they are for me some of the really important use cases of extended reality. If you want to learn more, head to my YouTube channel or my website where you can find hundreds of articles and videos on all of those topics.